Hi, I'm Todd Alford with System Sensor. We're here live at the NFPA 2011 show. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the latest addition to our advanced multi-criteria detection line. And we've been showing you our advanced multi-criteria detector for a couple of years now. And that's the device that uses four sensing elements to detect fire, which gives you excellent nuisance immunity as well as very robust fire detection. But we've now enhanced that further by adding the capability to detect carbon monoxide as a life safety solution. So what we'll be showing in the demonstration, if you look at the monitor above, we're showing the response from the detector as well as what the detector is sending back to the panel. So on this monitor, we're showing the four different sensing elements of the detector. This first band here in black with the green line, that's our photoelectric response, so that's the particulate that the detector is seeing. The next band here is what the thermistors are seeing, so the heat detection portion of the detector. Then the carbon monoxide portion, and then infrared, which is good for picking up flame signatures and other things that might false alarm a normal photoelectric detector, like light dazzling, arc welding, those sorts of things. This top band here is the composite signal, all the processing done by the detector, then sent back to the panel as a single signal. Okay, so let's see this in action. The first thing we'll show is how the device can recognize a nuisance alarm, but not actually go into alarm, avoid that as a, as a nuisance condition. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce some theater smoke, some artificial smoke. So we just have a smoke generator mounted in, in the kiosk. And you notice already the photoelectric portion of the detector has registered that and picked it up. And you can see it's starting to climb. So it sees the theater smoke in the chamber, but again, it's not enough to generate an alarm because it's not seeing that right combination of events from other elements. This is not indicative of a real fire, and it knows to ignore that as a nuisance condition. Now the next element we'll show is just the detector's responsiveness to heat and infrared. We've mounted an infrared heat lamp in the chamber here just to show that the detector does see the infrared as well as can respond to the heat, but again, not in a, ma in a manner that would cause an alarm. So you see the, the infrared signal spiked and actually if I hold it in for a little bit, I can usually generate a little bit of heat as well, which you can see that's starting to come up now. But again, if you notice that composite signal at the top of the graph, nothing being sent to the panel because this isn't indicative of a real fire event. So now the next element we're gonna show is the new enhanced feature, the carbon monoxide detection portion of our new advanced multi-criteria detector. So in this case, I'm using just compressed or canned carbon monoxide like you can buy at any fire alarm distributor, and I'm gonna introduce it right into the, the smoke detector chamber. I'm spraying it right into the chamber of the detector. And in this case, we should see the carbon monoxide coming up to full signal, as well as we've turned on our sounder base. And I've got an adjacent sounder base here on the, on the side. Both of them have come on. They're both in full synchronization. And that's perfect for a situation like a hotel room or an apartment with multiple rooms to have multiple sounder bases synchronized to each other so that you have a clear and consistent communication to the inhabitants. So as you can see, and probably here, we're in a CO alarm event condition, and we're producing that CO temp four tone. But let's say in a real event, somewhere else in the facility, there's a real fire, and you need to evacuate the facility. In that case, you don't want to continue to produce this. You want fire to take priority. So we can simulate that by simply pulling a pull station. So I'll do that, and you'll notice how the signal changes. Now not only do we have our sounder bases turned on, but we also have all the horns and horn strobes in the facility turned on. And it's responding to the system sensor synchronization pulse so that you can have the entire facility, what's happening in the individual rooms, as well as what's happening in the hallways, in full synchronization. So that again, you can communicate very clearly and consistently with all of the inhabitants of the building. Now the last thing we need to show you is that the device does respond in a real fire event. We're gonna first show you a local situation where maybe in your individual room, you have an event occur and you need to give local enunciation. We're gonna do that in this case by actually burning the cotton wick that we have installed in the kiosk. All we're doing here is we have a power supply attached to this fine wire wrapped around this cotton wick. It heats up that wire enough to where we can get this cotton wick good and smoldering, just like you might have if somebody dropped a cigarette on a pillow or on a couch and it's smoldered away for a little bit, you should obviously respond in that type of situation because you've got, you have incomplete combustion. You've got both the photoelectric signature, the, the smoldering smoke particulate, 
but in this case you also have the complementary signal of the carbon monoxide because you have incomplete combustion, which you very often see in a fire event. So that's pretty good. We've got a nice amount of smoke in the chamber. You can see our photoelectric response just starting to come up. We're now at about 3-4% per foot of smoke. That'll soon be followed now by the carbon monoxide signature. You can see that's starting to come up as well. Once the device has processed that over a couple of samples, it's going to recognize that this is indicative of a real fire situation and that they need to communicate that to the occupants of the space. So we should alarm probably in the next second or so here. And you'll see what will happen is we'll have just our sounder bases come on. Again, they're coming on, they're providing that temporal three evacuation tone which is required for fire and they're synchronized to each other. But we've kept it in a local scenario in this case so that it gives the occupants an opportunity to respond before we would evacuate an entire facility. However, if we did have a real fire event elsewhere in the facility or we can set up the system such that we want to evacuate on all conditions, we can again simulate that by pulling the pole station, now turning on the entire building, horns, strobes, and sounder bases throughout the facility in full synchronization with each other using the system sensor synchronization protocol. Again, providing a clear NFPA 72 compliant communication of the alarm event, all synchronized within the notification zone. Thank you for watching this demonstration of our new Fire CO product. For more information on this product, go to www.systemsensor.com forward slash Fire CO.